Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Stephanie. I'm a life and relationship coach. This week we are talking all about respect and more importantly, how to really start commanding respect from others. So if you're watching this video, chances are you want some information on what are the things that I can do that will allow the relationships or the people in my life to respect me more. Now one question I get often from people that are coming out of abusive relationships or even just a really bad marriage and have gone through a divorce or a breakup is I don't even often know sometimes when I'm being disrespected. So if you don't know, you haven't been in a healthy relationship to know, okay, well, what does abuse look like? What does manipulation look like? and you're not too familiar with those things, the quickest way to know if you're being disrespected is really how you feel. So you'll feel it inside, you'll feel it in your intuition when someone says something that just feels a little hurtful or that's rude or inappropriate. So even if you can't pinpoint something, you'll always be able to know, your body will always give you an indication as to when you feel uncomfortable in a certain situation. Now before we get started, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to click on the notification bell. This will inform you each week when I do upload a new video so you don't miss a thing. So now I wanna get into some ways that you can start demanding people respect you more. And one of the very first things that I always say, and it's something that is kind of common sense and I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times, is no one is going to respect you unless you start respecting yourself. So self-respect is really all about knowing who you are. So who are you and what are the things that you need to be in a healthy relationship? What do you need out of relationships in order to be fulfilled? What makes you tick? And not just what do you need from other people, right, to give to you in relationships, but what are the things that you know intuitively you need to start giving yourself that you're probably not? So is your self-talk really bad? Do you not know how to motivate yourself? Do you have low self-esteem and self-confidence? So working on, okay, where are my wounds? What are the things that I know that I need to work on? For me, my self-talk is always gonna be something that I'm gonna work on the rest of my life because I'm human, I have an ego, and at times that ego is, want, is going to want to keep me in fear and stress and self-doubt, and so really challenging that ego and learning how to quiet that ego throughout the course of my life is something that I know I'm going to always be working on, you know, forever. So now what are the things that you yourself need to be working on? What are the things that you need to give yourself? So one thing that people often don't give themselves is learning how to say no. So learning to say no is the most self-loving, self-respectful thing that you can do for yourself because what that means is in the moment, you chose to put yourself first. And now this is not a black or white situation. Obviously there are gonna be times when we say yes to something and we really wanna say no, but we say yes because someone really needs us, someone that we love and care about is struggling with something and we wanna help them out because we love them. But perhaps you know we just worked a 12 hour day and we're completely exhausted. So maybe it's not the thing that we really wanna do is to help this person, maybe we really wanna get some rest, but we know that it's beneficial towards building this relationship and helping this person because we love and care about this person. Now there are other times where we're a people pleaser, where we're a fixer, where we're a little codependent, and we're saying yes and yes to things, and we don't even think whether or not we wanna actually do it. And that's something that I struggled with for years, was I always would say yes to everything that people asked of me, and I never even asked myself, do I actually wanna do that? So one of the things that I always suggest to people is really, when someone asks something of you, all you have to do is just take a second and ask yourself, is this something that I really want to do right now? Is this something that is really good for me? Is this person trying to manipulate me? You know, so learning how to kind of stay in touch with yourself and take care of yourself in that way, that is self-respect. Because the problem with saying yes to everything and everyone is you begin to wear yourself really thin. And when you wear yourself out and you don't put yourself first, that's not self-respect. And the PS, no one respects that person. So the person that does everything for everyone, you know, that's the person that allows people sometimes to manipulate them and walk all over them. And that's not the person that 
people will look at and say, oh my God, I really wanna be this person, right? I wanna be her, I wanna be him. He's so confident and self-respectful and he knows how to take care of himself. That's really what people think of with the person that says yes to everything is, wow, that's a great girl or yeah, that's a great guy. And that's a, that's a great thing to have, right? To have people think that you're such a nice human being, but it also, there's also a story I guarantee you that people are saying in the back of their head is, but they do so much for other people and they never take care of themselves. Now the next thing is learn to invest in people that invest in you. And I'm not talking about relationships that you've had for a long period of time where there's mutual respect between you two. You know, there's a, a great healthy give and take in the relationship. I'm talking about learning how to invest into relationships, into new relationships, as that foundation is being built. So this goes for the beginning stages of dating, right? We don't just start giving everything to this person um, and we haven't really gotten a chance to get to know them and build that trust and build that, build that foundation. This also has to do with new friendships, right? When we meet new people and we're just getting to know each other, there is a healthy wall that should be up with both people because I'm not gonna give everything, I'm not gonna give myself to you if I don't even know you yet. So learn to invest into people and say yes to people when you know that they would say yes to you. So one of the most respectful things that you can do for yourself, the thing that will allow you to have happiness, keep your vibration intact, is learning how to not emotionally respond to others. So the next thing that allows you to really work on that self-respect is learning how to not emotionally react to others. So I talk about this extensively throughout my channel, is learning how to respond, not react. So when there's a discussion that's being had in a relationship or a disagreement or an argument and you can tell someone's getting really, really heated and you engage with that or if someone's using an abusive tactic on you, gaslighting, manipulation, being passive aggressive, giving you the silent treatment and you get so angry and emotionally charged up because of what they're trying to do and really what they're doing is just a defense mechanism or perhaps try to punish you for something that's going on inside of them, you know, when we react to it, number one, we lower our vibration and we meet that person where they're at. That's not self-loving, that's not self-respectful. So when we lower our vibration and we meet that person where they're at, what that is telling ourselves is that we haven't learned how to hold on to ourselves, that we haven't learned how to have self-respect and not get entangled in everyone else's business and everyone else's wounds and everyone else's defense mechanisms that they're using, right? that we haven't learned how to properly verbally communicate with others. And now we're going right into my next thing. Learning how to verbally communicate with others is literally the most self-loving, self-respectful thing that you can do. Now I know what you're thinking, um, I verbally communicate with people all the time, but I'm talking about healthy communication. And healthy communication means I'm only going to be responsible for myself. So if you're emotionally getting charged up, if you're you know, dealing with a person who's really negative and toxic, one of the worst things that you can do for yourself is get entangled in that mess. How often have you been in a situation where someone comes in a room and they're angry, you know, they're negative, they're trying to put things on you or project their stuff onto you and you take all of that on and then at the end of the disagreement, argument, discussion, whatever, that person walks away and they feel so much better and they're actually a little happy now and you are drained and you're negative and you're in a crappy space. You know, they transferred their negative energy onto you and you took it. You picked it up and, and you, you're carrying it now. That's not self-respect. Self-respect is being able to recognize when those things are happening in the midst of an argument, in the midst of a discussion, in your relationships, knowing when that stuff's happening, right? When someone's starting to project or manipulate or gaslight or be passive aggressive and you being able to be a mature adult and verbally communicate, oh, I see you're doing this you must be going through something right now. I'm gonna give you some space. I'm not going to engage with someone who's being disrespectful or someone who's being you know, emotionally abusive or rude or inappropriate. And you disengage from the conversation. You remove yourself from that space. That's showing self-love, that's showing that you have control over yourself, that you're not going to just react to every little thing that someone does to you. And that's self-respect right there. That means that you love yourself enough to not just 
let your emotions take over and get riled up in a situation that you know how to hold on to yourself, create that bubble and leave a situation or a disagreement or an argument if need be and verbally communicate with that person what it is you're doing, why you're leaving the situation. I get questions often from people that say, well, if I leave, isn't that given the silent treatment too? And isn't that passive aggressive? It's only passive aggressive and really giving some, someone the silent treatment when you don't verbally communicate. Right? So if you just shut down and all of a sudden the silent treatment happens or all of a sudden you're being passive aggressive um, or you're trying to like make someone feel guilty for something and being manipulative, that's completely different. But if you tell someone, hey, look, your behavior, I find it to be really rude and inappropriate and I'm not going to engage with you when you behave like this. And then you walk away. The next thing is you have to learn how to set boundaries. This is something that I know a lot of people struggle with, but you have to, number one, know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable behavior in your relationships. And so learning what self-respect is, like I said in the beginning, is learning about yourself, learning who are you, what do you need in relationships, what do you deem disrespectful? So in order to learn how to set boundaries, you have to know like, okay, well, what do I need out of a relationship? How do I wanna feel? What do I think is rude? What do I think is inappropriate behavior? Um, and you have to set that standard and you have to be able to verbally communicate that with whoever, your partner, coworker, friend, cousin, niece, doesn't really matter. Now with learning to set boundaries, it's sometimes it's not even really setting the boundaries, Boundary, it's learning how to enforce it and I think enforcing boundaries sometimes is really difficult for people because enforcing a boundary basically means that you're enforcing a consequence that hey I asked you to do this and I find this rude I find this disrespectful I've asked you a lot of times I've given you chances and not only is this something that you're not even working on you keep actually doing the thing that really hurts my feelings and so setting what is the consequence for that behavior. It's really just like having a child. It's the saying, you know, you teach people how to treat you by what you'll tolerate. So if you keep basically saying, okay, I'm enforcing boundaries, I don't like this behavior, but you keep putting up with it and you don't maybe leave a relationship, then you're basically stating that their behavior is okay because I'm not gonna do anything about it, that I'm still dealing with it. So if you're dealing with it, then you're telling that person not verbally, but you're telling that person that their behavior is okay. And that's not a person that respects themselves. So the last thing that I want you to really, really consider in this video is your self-talk is everything. The, the words that you say to yourself on a day-to-day -day basis have such a huge impact on every aspect of your life. And I sometimes don't think that people, you know, we work so hard in our jobs and we work so hard with our families and our children and we give and give and give to people that learning how to give to yourself and focusing every single day on what is my inner conversation? What are the things that I'm telling myself on a day to day basis? And it's definitely work in the beginning, but when you focus on, okay, I'm going to focus everything I have on learning how to really love myself, on learning how to have great inner conversations with myself and not letting that ego kind of run the show for a majority of my day. In the beginning, it really takes practice, it takes dedication, but I promise you, and I say this often, and I really, really mean it, the more you do it, the easier it gets. So every single day, focus on like, okay, what are the things that I need to be giving myself in order to learn how to have healthy inner dialogue? And really learning how to create that bubble. These are all things that as you start learning this stuff and do this stuff, you will just undoubtedly have self-respect because you'll learn, you're learning how to really love yourself. So I hope that that has helped you guys. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Don't forget to also like this video and I will see you next time.